Hello everyone, it's Ajaxter. Welcome back to the third episode in the series. Uh, today we're going to be learning about uh, object pooling. Um, last video I said we were going to do health, I think, and destroying projectiles on collision. Uh, but I want to do this first, and we can do that next video. Um, so, object pulling is, uh, our, our goal for this video is to, you know, look the same as we have it, but instead of instantiating all these bullets and destroying them, we have a pool of, of bullets, and then we just move them to the position, and it'll make a lot of more sense, uh, once we implement it but uh, it'll help with uh, performance and efficiency not on this scale you won't really notice it but in the future when there's tons of projectiles that you have to instantiate and destroy over and over again it can become expensive so let's get started so let's start with uh, create a C sharp script and then let's call it projectile pool. Okay. And then open it up. Okay. okay, so now we have our projectile pool open. Also, I forgot to mention at the end of this video, the game visually will look exactly the same and that is our goal um, it'll just work or function behind the scenes a little differently so first thing we have to declare serialized field and declare a size for the pool um, next serialized field uh, the projectile prefab Okay, and then the next thing is create a list of projectiles, and in this list, or we'll call this projectiles in pool, and then it should be good for now. So we can actually get rid of this update function. And what we're going to do first is we're going to instantiate all the projectiles into this in this pool uh, on game startup of you know the declared pool size so let's create an initialize pool we can call it that initialize pool function and let's f uh, do a for for loop uh, int i equals zero i is less than pool size I plus plus. Um, let's uh, we instantiate the projectiles. So let's do that. Uh, let's see. Game object uh, projectile equals instantiate um, projectile prefab transform dot position transform dot rotation and so this projectile pool class is going to be attached to some empty game object that we'll put in some position it'll make a lot of sense after this is finished or it'll make a lot more sense if you're a little lost so once we instantiate the projectile Let's add it to the projectiles in pool list. So projectiles in pool dot add projectile. And this is expect this projectiles in pool list is expecting projectiles. And right now projectile is a game object, so we need to get the projectile component off the game object. So let's 
call the initialize pool function on start. All right. Now we need a way to grab projectiles out of the pool and then put them back. So kind of like how we instantiate these projectile, we can just say we can call you know we can call function through the pool that instantiates uh, you know the projectile, and then we can make a function called return to pool which returns the projectiles to the pool. So first, let's make a instantiate. Uh, function so public um, projectile instantiate we're not actually instantiating it we're just moving it to a new position so let's put a vector 3 position and then a quaternion rotation all right and let's so now now once we call this function we we have the proje projectiles in the pool so let's get the first projectile in the pool so just projectiles in pool and then index 0 and then we can say projectile um, projectile equals projectiles in pool index 0 and then we set the projectile position transform Form dot position equals position, and then we set the rotation. It's form dot rotation, and then what we want to do is we want to uh, remove it from the projectiles and pool list because it's no longer in the pool; it's out in the world. So. Let's do that. Projectiles in pool dot remove and then projectile. And then let's return the projectile. So once you instantiate it, you can you know manipulate that projectile. Now let's make a function called uh, return to pool. This uh, this kind of works like destroy, except it doesn't actually destroy the object, it just moves it back to uh, the pool position. So return to pool. And then this accepts a projectile. And then all we have to do in this function is just add it to the pool. As well as <laughs> setting the transform that position uh, to the pool location. So the transform that position. Okay. Now this is all the code we need. Oh, actually, uh, let's make a singleton, like kind of like we did with the player gun in the last video. Um, so we'll call it public static projectile pool instance. And then in the awake function, say instance equals get component projectile pool. Okay, we have our projectile pool class. That's all the code that's needed for this class. Let's go back to the Unity editor and then go to the hierarchy, create empty. Let's reset. And then let's just rename this to projectile pool. And then we can set the position to whatever. You know, we could set it. We sh we eventually, you know, if you're making a game, you want to set it off screen so people don't see a pool of bullets. But for this, the purpose of this video, I want to show you guys um, what it looks like. So let's set it to, you know, something like five and uh, maybe, maybe this is fine. Or let's do like four or something. Okay. And then if I hit start, uh, but, oh yeah, we have to we have to attach uh, the projectile pool class to the game object. We always make something to say. And then uh, we we have to set the pool size. So the pool size is how many projectiles are 
going to be instantiated in the pool on game start and that will that you'll have in the pool uh the max amount of number the max amount of projectiles in the pool so let's do i don't know like six or something and then let's use our projectile prefab pass in our bullet prefab that we made last video this one and then let's hit play okay now you could see they all they they all just moved when I started the game because we still have code on the projectile when it spawns it moves so let's we have to change around some things with some of the code we made so let's go back to Visual Studio and let's open our projectile class all right so what we need to do is not you know move the projectile when it uh, what's it called when it you know instantiates what we want to do is make a bool private bool should move equals false and then only if it should move then we move the projectile also instead of destroying the game object after a certain amount of a uh, certain amount of distance we actually just want to call pool or projectile pool dot instance that return to pool and then we can just say this next we want to have a way to tell the projectile to start moving so we create a function called public void move we can just call it move that'll be fine and then yeah we can just do that and then this all this function does is just set uh, should move to true okay Let me just double check real quick yep that's good and so the the class that's going to be calling move is actually your your player gun so let's go to player gun and all we have to do here is instead of instantiating this um, we use a projectile pool it's instantiate so project or projectile pool that instance that instantiate and we don't need to pass in the projectile prefab anymore so let's get rid of that and then also we can just get rid of the serialized field projectile prefab and then let's say projectile equals what we just instantiated and then projectile dot move alright I think that is it so let's see um why isn't that working <laughs> what the heck? let's see should move this should move equals false what oh there is a null reference exception 27 what do you mean Hey, sorry about that. Um, so what we forgot to do was projectiles. Uh, we forgot to initialize the uh, projectiles in pool list. So projectiles in pool uh, projectile, and this is in our initialized pool function inside of projectile pool class. And now, hopefully, this should work. All right, sweet. And as you can see, all the bullets are coming from this pool right here, and we're not actually instantiating and destroying a bunch of bullets 
simultaneously. We're actually just moving the we are just moving the bullets. And we got a bunch of argument is out of range. That's because we're firing more than the bullets were returning. We could do some fancier solution so that that never happens, but what I'm just going to do is increase the pull size for now since this is a tutorial and a pretty basic tutorial as well. Just kind of like an intro to certain concepts. And so we should really not run into that uh, array, you know, indexes out of range error. And that's it for this video. Um, sorry I haven't been posting a lot. I'm very sporadic with my postings. But I enjoy all the comments and the likes and the subscribes that you all uh, reward me. And I read all the comments because I get so few. <laughs> so feel free to leave a like and stick around. Thanks.